Dr. Owen. Well, so okay. Gene Odom, explain to people, Gene Odom well, was the, on the plane. Gene was head of security and uh, childhood best friend of Ronnie Van Zant. They grew up together. Uh, Lacey Van Zant, Ronnie's father. Gene's parents passed away when he was very young, so Gene didn't have a father, and he tended to gravitate towards Ronnie because they were so close. And Lacey, Ronnie's dad, you know, and uh, his sister Marion, Ronnie's mother, kind of helped raise Gene. Uh, Gene was always head of security for Skinner, and on the day that they had the plane crash, Ronnie had taken a couple of sleeping tablets that he either got from Leslie or JoJo to the backup singers, and uh, was asleep on the floor of the plane. They'd been having engine trouble with the plane. They were running what they called an auto rich condition. They were having to increase fuel to one engine because it had a bad magneto, so it wouldn't backfire. You know, maybe blow cylinder head off. Well, more fuel. They were using twice as much fuel. Right. The pilots weren't aware of it, and. Uh, they actually ran out of fuel in midair. When the plane ran out of fuel, Ronnie was asleep in the very front of the plane. Uh, Gene realized they were going to crash, so he ran forward to get Ronnie off the floor of the plane. Ronnie was real groggy and didn't want to get up. So he slapped Ronnie and woke Ronnie up. He said, Ronnie, you've got to get in your seat. We're going to crash. Ronnie didn't know what was going on. Yet. I mean, imagine being almost like you're drunk or, you know, on some kind of medication and being, you know, awoken and telling him, you're going to crash the plane. Out fuel. So he got Ronnie in his seat got him strapped in and handed Ronnie a big crimson colored pillow. Before Gene could turn around, he heard uh, Gary Rossington and Billy Powell yell, trees. At that time, you could see the trees on either side of the plane, you know, the taller trees. Before Gene could get in his seat or even sit down in another seat, it sounded like a thousand baseball bats hit the bottom of the plane. That's the way that the guys described it to me. They hit the trees and the plane went probably a hundred yards. It broke into three pieces. Ronnie died bit suffocation. Ronnie didn't die from injuries in the plane crash to the head or anything. He had one little eighth of an inch scratch behind his left ear, if I'm not mistaken. Ronnie died because he was under a pile of bodies and all the equipment. The plane that was ripped loose and came forward. Ronnie was on a pile in under a pile of bodies. For years, Gene blamed himself for killing Ronnie. He thought he killed Ronnie. His job was to keep Ronnie alive. He was head of security, Ronnie's bodyguard. Right. Gene was in the hospital. He was horribly burned on the side of his face. There was no fire. The only thing that they could figure out that caused his burns, the plane carried the icy flares. And they did, in fact, go off. They think that the uh, molten aluminum and magnesium, you know, from the plane fuselage and the motor, you know, melted and ran down on Gene's face. It actually boiled his eye in the socket, so they had to take it out later. Gene spent three, if I'm not mistaken, three months or so in the hospital recovering from his injuries. The day that he got picked up, they had taken the TV out of Gene's room, they edited any kind of root material he got because they thought Gene would kill himself when he found out Ronnie was dead. He kept telling his girlfriend, you know, I want to go see Ronnie. Well, when they left the hospital, they turned to go out to Ronnie's house. When they got to where the road forks, instead of turning right, she turned left and took Gene down to Jacksonville Memory Garden where Ronnie was in care. Ronnie was buried there. So Ronnie knew, you know, Gene knew Ronnie was dead. And Gene went insane. Gene just, you know, he always blamed himself for Ronnie's death. It was his job, he thought, to keep Ronnie alive. Gene's a real nice guy. He's probably one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And uh, he's got a grandson. The reason he's in Oklahoma now, Gene has a grandson who has leukemia. The child is, he's been on the verge of death two or three times. And uh, the child's health is taking a turn for the worse now. His daughter also has leukemia. They think it's leukemia. They haven't really diagnosed it for it yet. They're doing that now. So everything that Gene does centers around that child. Gene doesn't even have a home to live in. When I met Gene for the first time, after seven or eight years I hadn't seen Gene, Gene was living in a storage unit, you know, where you store furniture. Didn't even have a house. No wow. Option. Now here's a guy that has written two national best-selling books, was with Skinner from the start when they were called the 1%, you know, the pretty ones, they weren't even Skinner. Plane crash survivor kept these guys alive and Gene's got nothing. We brought Gene to South Carolina, moved him in with my family up there, and we got Gene back on his feet. But everything that Gene does, the reason Gene has no money, if Gene was to meet you guys out in the middle of the desert with a flat tire and he had 30 bucks, he'd take that 30 bucks and get you guys a motel room and try to hustle a few books in the street for him and get gas to go. Wow. Mm. Everything he gets, he gives to that child. If you give Gene $10,000 a day, he's going to take it and give it to that child. That's just the way Gene is. So, you know, every, every book that Gene sells really benefits the sick child. So if you guys can help Gene or any of your listeners could buy a book from Gene, you know, from his website. I can't wait awesome. to talk to him, and I've got his number. And Dave Lawson yeah. here, my buddy from Rookies, my partner in crime, as I say, <laughs> just talk to him, and I've got his number, and I'm going to call him when we get back to Knoxville, and yeah, absolutely, we'll help him out. Well, if you guys can, man, we will bring some race cars up there for your listeners. We'll bring some stuff to give away. We'll give away a bunch of books. I bought several cases of Gene's books. 
anybody that wants one, I'll give them a book. And if they want to come up, it'll help you guys some. Maybe we can benefit each other. So you got some yeah. place cards with you. Lee Rollins rocks in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Buddy, yeah, I got man. you fool. But uh, thank you. Man, I got to It's nice to meet you guys. Once nice again, you got to be brother. careful. Thank Appreciate you. it. Okay. Call Dean. David, just talk to him, man. Okay. I to talk to will. You guys be safe. You thank you. Me now. I'm going to leave you alone now. All right. No, you're fine. Hey, what's your son's name? Uh, Brandon Rollins. Brandon. Brandon. Here, get back up here talking to this, I'm afraid my audio's not picking Yeah, it might not pick that up. Sorry, no, That's all right. No, we want to watch no, your son, I, I'm man. I'm uploading the video here. We, we're, we're stranded till we get that done. Oh so anyway, yeah. uh, your Brandon. son's Brandon and yeah. Brandon Rollins. He's driving for Abraham Motorsports, yep. Ray, Ray and Willie. Ray and Willie. Right. And uh, the late model okay. series. And now you said that you talk about the indoor series with uh, the Joe Gibbs bunch. Go ahead with yeah, that. This was that. a series. We actually ran an indoor series with Tony Stewart, J.J. Yaley, Denny Hamlin, and Kyle Busch. Right. Were these late model? No, it was all indoors, and these were scaled-down cup cars. They're half-scale cars on a half-scale Bristol track. And uh, you're familiar with arena football. Right. Well, a guy named Ricky Dennis up in Virginia looked at this, and he said, why can't we race year-round? These guys are racing. <laughs> They're gearheads. So he approached uh, Coach Gibbs, and they actually did it in Virginia for two years before they came down here. And they run, you can actually own a race team. Uh, there are 52 slots allotted for this series, and you can own a car, have a race team, and race with these NASCAR and Bush guys. Uh, Tony you, Stewart, J.J. Yeager, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, and they had a lot of other guys. Carl Edwards came in and looked at them. Uh, Michael Waltrip, uh, Mark Martin, a lot of the cup drivers are slated to buy, if I'm not mistaken, cars for this season, which is going to start again, I think, in uh, October. And what's the series called? It's called Arena Racing. Arena Racing. Yep. So and if we Google Arena Racing, we'll find it. You certainly will. ArenaRacing.com is their website, unless they've changed it. A uh, guy named Brad Hardy is actually over this thing down here in South North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Brad actually works with Coach Joe Gibbs. He does a lot of stuff for Gibbs. He's, he's like a jack of all trades, master of none. Promise yeah. you we'll get you something to do with it. <laughs> all right. Wow. Be safe. All right. <laughs>